Last year, Callum gave a speech at a live event that we did um, towards the end of the year, advocating for what he refers to as a meme position, that is, of a feminist immigration policy. So, as it's mostly male immigrants that bring the vast majority of problems, from grooming gangs to Muslim patrols to voodoo child sacrifice to drug smuggling and gang violence, although to be fair, we were good at that last one already before immigration. Mm. I'm looking at the Peaky Blinders in particular. The Glasgow Razor Gangs that Cal yes. Dank has just done a video on as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, but nevertheless, it seems like a lot of the problems with immigration in general seem to come from the men more yeah. so than the women. Random machete attacks were not a British pastime. Mm -hmm. um, and this is why Callum devised a policy that would trick feminists into being anti-immigration by posing it as a feminist position to only support women and exclude men. And he was trying to, it was like a, a funny way of trying to get immigration control in whilst riding on the current thing. This was before Callum went to Afghanistan, by the way, so this was not just a very subversive and clever way to get himself a harem of Middle Eastern women. No, <laughs> bravo, sir. But here it is on the website, why um, feminist immigration policy will save the West. And there he is. Looking very dapper. Mm -hmm. So if you want to watch that, um, make sure to sign up to the website and uh, it's there in full. So you didn't even need to attend the live event in London. You can watch it here as long as you're a paying subscriber to the website, which is only £5 a month. But um, Yes, it seems like Callum was somewhat of a prophet. You, uh, you could say uh, Callum was rather pleased with this as well, peace be upon him. Um, let's have a look at where this Callum fate really is. And of course, it is Italy. Um, so here we have an article from um, GB News titled, Italy bans male migrants from coming ashore as new hardline PM cracks down on immigration. Italy has banned male migrants from coming ashore as their new Prime Minister attempts to crack down on immigration. A total of 250 people remain on two vessels docked in uh, Catania, Sicily, um, as charities hit back um, at the Italian government's actions. Over the weekend, Italian authorities said children and those in need of urgent medical care could disembark, um, that's, I think it should say, women and children, mm. and those needing urgent medical care could disembark from the two ships, but anyone else could not. Um, while the captain of one boat named Humanity One has refused to leave port. Um, it's like the communist Thunderbirds. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, the captain of the Humanity One, who is legally responsible for the safety of all people on board, has refused the request to leave the port with the remaining 35 survivors on board, the NGO responsible for the vessel said. Do we know which NGO this is? It's a German NGO. Oh, right. Do we know who funds a German NGO by any chance? <laughs> I, I didn't look into it because it's... Pretty self-evident that if they're okay. funding waves of refugees, they're no friend of ours, are they? Yeah. Does it? Rem does the name remind me of Horge Moros, mm -hmm. by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to this article from um, Remix, um, titled, Italy allows only the vulnerable to disembark migrant NGO ships, um, orders captain to leave with adult males still on board. And it reads as follows. The Italian government has authorised women, children and men with medical issues to disembark humanitarian NGO vessel currently docked in Catania, but has refused entry to the country for the remaining adult males on board. So they're keeping the fighting age men out of their country. I mean, who would have thought, eh? Mm. I mean, in, in Britain, at least, we have all of these fighting age men coming ashore saying how unfortunate they are with their expensive phones, designer clothes. Just, yes, I, I've been fleeing war, but I've got all of these nice things that many British people can't even afford. I'm so glad I have to work for a third of my paycheck to be partitioned off so it can be spent on chancers who come across the channel to sit in a hotel, which I would otherwise have to work to pay to stay in on holiday, and mm -hmm. so they can piddle off down the high street to a local JD Sports and blow everything on designer trainers, which they can then slav squat outside of their hotel in all day and smoke cigarettes while giving me dirty looks as if I don't belong in my own country. Go away! I've actually seen it whereby I've seen the same people again and again just chilling out in coffee shops, staying mm. in the hotels where the migrants are staying. They're living a, a more enjoyable existence than I am, particularly when I'm forced to read depressing news like this. Yeah, they're like the, the Parisian ex expats from America in the 1920s who just sat around in little cafes all day debating issues <sighs> and writing fantastic literature. I can't wait for the, the boom of intellectualism that comes from the Eritreans mm. currently occupying the local Holiday Inn down the road. Yeah, they're discussing... Should I rape or should I burglarise? I mean, I, I can't just decide which one. I love that song from The Clash. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it, it goes on to say, um, a total of 144 people disembarked the Humanity One vessel on Sunday. The ship sails under a German flag and is operated by a German crew. A further 357 people on board the Norwegian-run Geo Barents ship. Um, however, 250 adult males were refused access to disembark the two vessels by Italian authorities. And Italy's new appointed interior minister, Matteo uh, Piantedososi, I think. Cook it a pizza, eh? <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching this, Matteo, but I can't pronounce your name. Um, he said that those who don't, um, do not qualify as vulnerable must leave Italian waters and be assisted by the flag state, in this instance, either Germany or Norway. Nice for once that the Italians are not getting bullied by the Germans. I know. I mean, this is the point where they've changed sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Return to tradition. <laughs> um a further two vessels carrying hundreds of migrants each remain anchored off the Italian coast, awaiting permission to dock. Um, the German captain of Humanity One, however, is refusing to leave Catania with the remaining men on board, and the charity that funds the boat has commenced legal action against the Italian government. I mean, it's their country. Your stupid German charity. I mean, you can't trump national sovereignty, I'm afraid. Yes, but George Soros clearly thinks he can, and mm -hmm. I would be willing to bet he funds this. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and I'm quoting here, If I left now, I would violate an endless series of international laws and conventions here in the port of Catania, said Captain uh, Joachim Ebeling um, to La Repubblica newspaper. I am not doing anything illegal. I am following the law of the sea. Ah, oh, shouldn't be Simbers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise you had German pirates, but there we go. <laughs> um, in a series of tweets on Sunday, the SOS Humanity Charity revealed it would be taking legal action against the decree of the Italian government and the prevention of the disembarkation of 35 rescued people from the Humanity One. Look at those euphemisms, it's so annoying. I know. Rescued people. From what? Their own terrible countries which they didn't mm -hmm. stay to improve. Italy's actions violate European law and the Geneva Refugee Convention. Your actions literally... <laughs> violate the Geneva Convention. Give me Nikes or my human rights are violated. This is like the geopolitical equivalent of telling the teacher on you, isn't yep. it? Just like, I'm going to the authorities, I'm going to tell you off. Shut up. Remember, snitches get stitches. It's a rule I live by. Um, a diplomatic row ensued over the weekend between Germany and Italy after the new Italian government initially refused to, um, access to the docks for free NGO ships with more than a thousand people on board. Both Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney and Interior Minister Matteo, what's his name? held firm in insisting that Italy would not continue to be a gateway for those wanting to reach the European Union. Berlin had pressured the Italian Foreign Ministry, urging it to accept all migrants on board. The German registered Humanity One. Um, so yes, the Germans want more immigrants apparently, mm. whereas the Italians are holding strong and hopefully curtailing some of the fighting age men that have been invading Europe from basically safe countries that are perfectly stable. Well, and people have no reason to leave. The Germans still have this national guilt complex for the Holocaust. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was horrible. But you didn't perpetrate it like individual Germans alive today. So you don't have to destroy your own country out mm -hmm. of fear that you'll turn into something awful. You know, you, you can you can be patriotic and also not murderous tyrants. That is a that is a possibility. I know it's a radical position here, mm -hmm. but you don't have to destroy your entire culture and legacy and allow yourselves to be colonized out of some misguided sense of guilt. Mm -hmm. But if this couldn't get any better, um, this next article is just fantastic. They're sticking it to the French. So, France forced to accept NGO migrant boat after Italian PM Maloney refused to back down in call with Macron. Right. Excuse me if I don't celebrate this, because there won't be French migrants. They'll be ours. I know, yeah. I mean, that is uh... the, the unfortunate thing. But at least the Italians are doing the right thing for their country. The fact that we don't have a spine and haven't mined the channel yet, but... Yeah. Oops, did I say that? Um, <laughs> but yes, it reads as follows. Mine it in Minecraft, in Minecraft. <laughs> An NGO humanitarian vessel carrying hundreds of migrants, blah, 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 um, um, granted permission to dock in the French port of Marseille um, after the newly elected Italian government repeatedly refused it permission to offload passengers in Sicily. It's that easy, everyone else. Yeah, just no thanks. Yeah, That's we're it. not going to do it. We're not going to let you. And that mysteriously, nothing happens. Yeah, I'll do my um, year two nativity line of no room at the inn. <laughs> Starring moment. Um, 
A call took place on Tuesday between Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney and French President Emmanuel Macron, where the former emphasised the Italian government's hardline approach to immigration in no uncertain terms. This prompted the French president to authorise the docking of the Ocean Viking, operated by the SOS uh, Mediterranean um, NGO in France. Well, he does like being told what to do by women, so it seems Macron actually listened for once, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, that's where we went wrong. We've got Rishi Sunak now. We should have got yeah. Liz Truss back and Macron would have been walked all over. Like yes. his, uh... The first time that Liz Truss is ever authoritative. <laughs> it's only because Macron's a cuckold. Did I say I that mean, out loud? <laughs> I mean, his his wife is his old school teacher. His so... old drama teacher, yeah. It's so weird. There's like she's She is actually old enough to be his mother, isn't she? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how this has turned into me insulting Macron. But I bet there's I mean, dust down there. Anyway. <laughs> it's an old English tradition to insult the French, so I, I, I just slip into it sometimes. So um, it, it ends with, uh, there are currently 234 migrants on board the vessel, which has been anchored off the Italian coast for over two weeks awaiting a safe place to dock, which is not Italy now. So yes, this proves conclusively that you can just say no. You can say, I do not consent to you immigrants, and believe it or not, they have to listen. Funny that, isn't it? That I know this is, of course, a ship that's hoovered them up, but it just goes to show that the international community is not going to intervene. They've already gone to France. I mean, Italy has got what they wanted. This is all you need to do. Just say no. And mysteriously, they go away. It's, it's almost like they know that they're going to get let in, so they come anyway. It's, it's strange. I mean... At least we've got a positive model that this actually does work and the international community doesn't intervene, like is forever lofted over people's heads, just like, yes, you can't do this because it's against the the rules of the Geneva Convention and things like that. Well, no, we're just going to do what we want and, yes, not let all these fighting age men into our country to ruin it from within, funnily enough. There comes a time where moral men must disobey immoral laws. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one on the armistice of the First World War. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.